Good beautiful Friday afternoon to you all my rule lectures out there. This is Eric the rule lecture here with you uh, on this beautiful almost cloudless Friday afternoon after all the rain that we've had this past week. Sure I'm glad to see the rain gone even though we did need the rain. Um, but I'm, I'm really glad to see the sunshine and the blue skies out there again. I uh, hope everybody's having a fantastic day. And if you are heading out of town on a long Memorial Day weekend or possibly a uh, start of a family vacation, I hope you have a very safe and fun trip and make it back home uh, safe and sound. But remember what this weekend really is about. It is all the veterans who have laid their life on the line and gave the ultimate sacrifice for our safety and for our freedoms. So remember that whenever you're on your trip, wherever you may be, uh, keep those people in mind and the families they have left behind, their children, their wives, uh, their, their husbands, and just remember all of the people who uh, sacrificed their lives through all the wars that we have had uh, in our lifetime. So with that being said, I'm going to get into the video. Well, well before I get into to the actual video, I want to also say that I apologize for not getting this video out sooner. Uh, I actually had all intentions of trying to get the video completed and, and uploaded this past Saturday, and it just didn't happen because um, the end of school was coming up. Um, my daughter's involved in dance, and she actually had a recital that was coming up on Saturday, and they had an extra practice on Friday uh, that she had to go to, and uh, an actual dress rehearsal at the auditorium at the uh, local high school where they actually have the uh, recital at. And um, my wife wanted me to go with them and hang out with her while my my daughter was in the um, in the practice, and she was in there for about. Oh, 45 minutes to an hour and then we went out to eat afterwards so I didn't really get much done accomplished Friday night like I was hoping to Saturday morning I did get up and work quite a bit on it uh, spent several hours in fact a good portion of the morning uh, working on it before we had to get start getting ready uh, to go to my daughter's um, dance recital uh, that afternoon which started at 2 and she had to be there around 1 30 so you can imagine we had to leave the house probably around 1 o'clock get her there by 1 30 and then the dance recital started too and she actually had two performances that she was in and one at two and one at four so that took up a good portion of the afternoon and then we went out to eat afterwards and I did come home and do some work on it that evening but not a whole awful lot and then I worked on it some more Sunday but during this week um, even though I haven't worked too awful hard this past week it's just hard for me to get motivated whenever I get home from work to try to to actually work on this video or any video for that matter but with that being said we'll get into the actual um, what the video is about the video is about the Cherokee people and more specifically the capital of the Cherokee Nation which is New Echota outside of Calhoun Georgia and um, a few weeks ago uh, like I said in the teaser video that I released uh, last week, while I was off from work and, and doing some work around the house, we usually take a few little uh, day trips here and there as a family. And one of those trips that we took was with my daughter on a, a little learning field trip over to uh, this new Echota. And I took my filming equipment thinking it would be a good uh, thing to film and actually do a video on. And so I did, I, we got over there and I started filming and taking pictures. And um, as I learned more, of course I knew quite, I've known quite a bit about the, the Cherokee people um, through the years, through uh, the history that I've, I've taken in, in school as I was growing up. But um, I decided that this was gonna be a tribute to the Cherokee people and their resilience as a people in in how they was a peaceful people and how they tried to get along with the white people that was moving into their area into their land into their territory um they were a very smart people uh, how they came up with their own alphabet and um symbols for words they used and uh, they were one of the first native americans to ever publish a newspaper for their people 
and eventually they started uh, publishing it not only for uh, the Cherokee people but other Native American groups, uh, Indians, and so uh, it was all things uh, Native American as you'll see in the video. But uh, with that being said, like I said, this is going to be a tribute of the Cherokee people, a history of the Cherokee people and of New Echota, the uh, capital of the Cherokee Nation, which, you know, it was um, a little town. Actually, the name of it was a little town uh, originally, and whenever uh, they decided to uh, rename it to New Echota, they had selected this town uh, because it was kind of centralized in the uh, within the Cherokee Nation, which uh, took up parts of uh, North Georgia, western North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, and northern Alabama. And um, so that's how far their uh, territory reached, uh, stretched, uh, way back in the 1700s. But over the years, as the white man, the white settlers, started coming into the area and settling in these areas and, and basically started taking the land away from them, by force or by treaty, whatever the case may be, uh, that territory, of course, uh, continued to shrink up until the mid-1800s whenever they were finally forced uh, out of their homes, out of their land, into stockades and held there for several months before they were forced out west onto reservations. So that's what this video is all about. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, at the beginning of it uh, going into the museum, which is part of the visitor center there at New Echota, which is now a state park. Um, I think it was actually started by the people, the local area people of uh, Calhoun, Georgia, and uh, eventually the uh, Georgia state took it over and has run it ever since. And so now it is a state park and run by the state through state funds. So they have a museum and it's, it's a very small but very uh, detailed museum. They have a lot of artifacts from the, Cher uh, from the Cherokee people and a lot of the history. So it's very interesting. We went through it before we went out actually into the town. Of course, a lot of these buildings that are there are not the original buildings. They were reconstruction of uh, buildings that were there in the town of New Echota, uh, and they got this from, you know, digging up history, archaeological find uh, records uh, that they had back at the time, and so that's how they come up with how these buildings may have looked at the time. So anyway, with that being said, let's get into the video. New Echota, or Newtown as it was originally named, was the seat of government of the Cherokee Nation for a short time from the years 1825 through 1838 when they were ultimately evicted from their homes and homeland which included portions of Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, and Tennessee, rounded up into stockades and moved west to what is now eastern Oklahoma. For the most part, from this point forward, I'm not going to read all the signs I have pictures of unless it has some historical significance or is, what I feel, too small a print to be able to read on the screen. So if you want to read the signs yourself, feel free to stop the video at any time to give yourself more time to read the entire sign. This monument was a memorial to the Cherokee Indians erected by the United States government in 1931 on the site of New Echota. Originally in a field across State Route 225, just north of where the state park is now, the monument was later deconstructed and moved to its present location when the historic site was built and when a golf course was constructed on the field where the monument was originally located. As stated in previous excerpts, the forced removal of the Cherokee people from their homes throughout the region, imprisoned in temporary stockades in different locations around the area, and then forcibly moved to the west became known as the Trail of Tears. This plaque tells the story of that tragic event for future generations. These four plaques are just to the right of the main entrance going into the museum and gift shop at the park. From left to right is the oldest to the newest, starting with the historic site and journalism plaque donated by Sigma Delta Chi on October 30, 1971. Then to the bottom of the two center plaques is the next oldest of the new Echota State Park being recognized as a National Historic Landmark in 1974 by the United States Department of the Interior. 
The top plaque is commemorating the 150th anniversary of the Trail of Tears tragedy donated by the Eastern Band of the Cherokee Indians in 1988. And finally, the far right plaque is to honor the first Native American newspaper, the Cherokee Phoenix, in 1994 by the Native American Journalist Association. This plaque reads, and I quote, Historic site in journalism, the Cherokee Nation of Indians established the first Indian language newspaper, the Cherokee Phoenix, on this site in 1828, edited by Cherokee Elias Boudinot and later by Elijah Hicks. The Cherokee Phoenix was printed bilingually in the Sequoian syllabary adopted by the Cherokees and in English during the period 1828 to 1934. Mark this 30th day of October 1971 by Sigma Delta Chi Professional Journalistic Society. The bottom of these two plaques reads, Nui Choda has been designated a National Historic Landmark. This site possesses national significance in commemorating the history of the United States of America. 1974 National Park Service, United States Department of the Interior. The top plaque reads, presented October 4, 1988 to the people of Georgia by the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians and the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma in appreciation of their remembrance of the 150th anniversary of the tragic Trail of Tears, 1838-1988. And finally, this last plaque reads, Cherokee Phoenix, 1828-1934, to honor the first Native American newspaper and to celebrate the founding of Native American journalism at this place in 1828, erected by the Native American Journalists Association, 1994. This collage is part of the small museum inside the visitor center. It tells the beginning of New Echota as a state park. As the top paragraph of the display states, the idea for the preservation of the historic property of Nui Choda and development of a park arose from the interest and efforts of local Calhoun citizens, beginning in 1949 and continuing through the development of and fundraising efforts for the Nui Choda Foundation. Support for the project came from near and far as the history of Nui Choda was researched and plans made for a new state park. As you can see, there are pictures and newspaper clippings of the beginning and history of the park as part of the display. This display of the museum goes into some more historical detail of the forced removal of the Cherokee people from their land. This tells of the subsequent land lottery of the former Cherokee Nation to the settlers moving into the region after the forced removal of the Native Americans. This plaque tells of the court battle of the Cherokee people to keep their land taken it all the way to the United States Supreme Court, which they did win, but ultimately were still forced to move given that neither the federal government nor Georgia officials would follow the ruling. Being this plaque tells history of such importance, I'm going to read its entirety. Seeking an opportunity to take their battle to the highest court in the land, the Cherokee Nation presented two court cases which caused one of the earliest battles between the federal government versus states' rights. Although the U.S. Supreme Court eventually ruled in the Cherokees' favor, President Andrew Jackson and Georgia officials refused to follow the ruling. Cherokee exhilaration at the Supreme Court ruling was soon followed by despair, as the Cherokee learned those who created the laws would not honor the laws themselves. Earlier hopes to stay on their land continued to spiral down to the understanding that like their other southern Indian neighbors, they too would lose the fight to remain on their homeland. This display tells of the first gold rush of the nation's history in and around the northeast Georgia area, more specifically the Dahlonega area, and how it aggravated and accelerated the breakdown of relations between the Cherokees and the European settlers. Despite Georgia law forbidding the Cherokees from mining gold on their own land, 
Cherokees joined the large number of white miners swarming illegally into their country in search of riches. This part of the museum shows how as one nation grew, another one shrank, namely the Cherokee Nation. Through land treaties, whether by a few non-representative Cherokee people themselves or bribery, trickery, or punishment from more of the area white people, treaties kept taking the land away from the Cherokee people little bit by little bit, starting from as early as the 1700s until the Europeans finally took the rest of their land by force in the early 1800s. As you can somewhat see, the bottom of the display shows the area of the Cherokee Nation starting from their original territory in the early 1700s until it was reduced to a fraction of the size of what they originally started with in the early 1800s, all through the action of land treaties. We're now outside fixing to tour the grounds of New Echota, the capital of what was the Cherokee Nation, and we're looking over a reconstruction of what would have been a Cherokee farmstead consisting of a home and outbuildings. This map shows the layout of the town as it would have been in the early 1800s. Notice the council house and supreme courthouse near the town square. A closer look at the typical Cherokee farmstead of the area. This sign tells of the disappearance of Nui Choda as a town by the late 1800s with the buildings being all but destroyed and the trees cleared from the area to make way for farming. We're now looking at a reconstruction of the council house, part of the seat of government for the Cherokee Nation. This plaque tells the story of Nui Choda being the capital of the Cherokee Nation and how it was picked because of it being approximately the center of their territory. A look at the inside of the council house.
We're now looking at the outside of the reconstructed Supreme Court House, another vital part of the government for the Cherokee Nation. A look at the inside of the Supreme Court House. We're now at the Rogers House site. John Rogers was a white man who married a Cherokee woman and lived on this location in the early 1830s. He was listed as poor in an 1831 survey of white men living in the Cherokee Nation. We are now approaching the Worcester House, the only structure to have survived at New Echota. Constructed in 1828 by Reverend Samuel A. Worcester, it served as the New Echota Mission Station and also as the Worcester family home. It sits at the far back corner of the New Echota State Park and quite a walk from the town square of New Echota. Back closer to the town square stands the Tarvin House, a two-story structure that was built by Georgian William J. Tarvin, who moved to New Echota to trade with the Cherokees in 1829. Built as a dwelling house and store, it was later expanded to include food and lodging. This was not the original site of the house, as the house stood on what is now private property just south of here and not part of the state park. We're now at one of the most important buildings in the town of New Echota, and quite frankly within the Cherokee Nation which defined the Cherokee people as one of the most advanced and civilized Native American people of the time. Here stands the print shop at the Cherokee Phoenix, the first newspaper printed by Native Americans for the Cherokee people, and later was renamed the Cherokee Phoenix and Indian Advocate to reflect all things Native American, not just Cherokee. What made this paper so very special and unique was that not only was it printed in their native language of Cherokee, 
which had only been developed seven years prior to the start of the paper by Cherokee native Sequoia, who worked on it for ten years and was complete in 1821, but was also printed in English, which quite a few Cherokee had also learned and was quite fluent in from dealing with the white people in the area on a business and commerce level. We're now coming to the end of our tour of New Echota, the former capital of the Cherokee Nation and the New Echota State Park by taking a look across the vast town square of the area. That brings us to the end of our video tour of the capital city of the Cherokee Nation, New Echota, and the New Echota State Park and Museum. I really hope you enjoyed this look at the Cherokee people, their capital city, and what they had to go through in the mid-19th century and learn some history along the way about the intelligence and resilience of the Cherokee people. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share it with others. If you would like to see more videos like this or abandoned videos, which I'm getting plenty of, please consider subscribing to my channel. To be notified when I upload new videos, please click on the bell icon at the top. If you have comments, corrections, or suggestions on this or any other video, please leave them in the comments section below. I read them all whether I respond to them or not and enjoy all the feedback. And to keep up with my exploring adventures, you can follow me on my Facebook and Instagram pages. I'll leave links to those sites in the description below. If you would like to become a rural expert yourself, please consider making a small contribution to my work through my Patreon page. I'll leave a link for that as well in the description below. Thanks so much again for watching. God bless and we'll see you in my next video.